peace peace everyone peace off you know um everyone is here welcome it's chief you yeah of course and uh we're on the command today peace uh if you can hear me i know we're at a different time so i may have a different subset of individuals who are present right now so if you're able to hear me someone just say you can hear me please so that way i'm not Oh, thank you, Kashia. <laughs> You're still there. Okay, cool. Peace, 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 brother Christian. Yeah, greetings. Um, peace to Precious Mom. Peace, Iris McKay. You know, um, I know I'm coming in a, a little, little uh, late. Well, about an hour later. Peace, Amal. Peace, Tanika. Peace, Shannon. Yeah, everybody's up now. <laughs> everybody's up and chipper. Usually. People kind of crawl in one by one. Everybody, everybody's here now. Peace over Dina. Yeah, y'all up. Wow. Wild girl. Pad Mini. Alex again. James Gotabaki. You know, uh, Rika Shy. <laughs> everybody's up. Peace, Baba U2. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to see everybody's, um, you know, up and making it happen, of course. You know, Plant OG. Please, peace, Labette. 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 Anderson, Lavette. It's a nice name, Lavette. <laughs> Peace, Benin bread. Yeah, yeah. Good joining to you. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna be too long because um, you already know, right? You already know. I uh, got a lot of stuff on my plate today that I have uh, to get knocked out before a certain certain time of day. <laughs> Passing the correct collection plate around early, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, peace, YG gutter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, that's what I wanted to get into real quick. As you see from the title of the live, um, freedom from bondage, right? Um, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a hit it, quit it. <laughs> but I want to get into that real quick with you all uh, because... If you notice, everything that we've covered is related. You see, um, whether it's, like I said, controlling emotions, having a vision, um, kind of knowing your place and your role, you know, getting free, you know, recognizing certain things that are that are in your life or, you know, um, being able to communicate, being able to respond or react, um, you know, different things like that. You know, peace, Sister Manera, peace, Sherelle. Glad I'm early. Heard you weren't staying long. Yeah. <laughs> um, peace, Cassie Durwin. How you doing? How you doing, Cassie Durwin? So, um, you know, based upon that, if you notice, like, everything is is pretty pretty connected. Peace, Yerod, the Bush doctor. Peace, Yerod. Um, all right. I'm sorry, I got off on your name for a second in my mind. I lost focus. I was thinking Yarod, and I was like, Jared, and it would really originally be Yarod or Yarod, and I wonder if the name you had was Jared, and you recognized the, the original name should have been Yarod, and you took the jail. My mind is sorry about that. <laughs> peace, Krishan. Um, you know, as always, peace to you. You know, it seems to be a good time for y'all. But you know what? I'm still going to keep it at the earlier time because even if you if you don't catch it live, I think it's good whenever you're starting to, to you know, yeah, to get it before the sun comes up. And like I've shared with you all before, once the sun comes up, I pretty much lose all my strength. <laughs> I'm like a, a I'm, I'm bizarro Superman. You know what I mean? I don't get my power from the sun. The sun comes out and I start to lose power. Peace, Juanisha and Baba Cruz. So, yeah, I'm going to get into it. And if I miss anyone in the chat, I'll try to go back. You know, I, I I think the greetings are very important, especially when you render a greeting. To me, I don't I don't ever want to seem like I'm, I'm ignoring you. I don't care how many people, you know, jump up in the chat. I always will try to acknowledge you. Peace, Shannon. I think it's oh, respectful. But anyway... So, you know, um, one of the things, again, related to taking command, right, is self-control. 
you know, one of the challenges with self-control and really not having it is a lot of times is based around one thing, someone else having control over us or something else having control over us. And when we're seeking to achieve peace, Nikki love and peace, Nadia, when we're seeking to gain control, right? You know, take control of our lives, gain control, you know, sometimes it's really challenging because we're, we're already, we've already been claimed by our addictions. You know, we're held in bondage by our addiction, our addictions and the role from a to Z, A to Q, whatever, you know, however far you're going to go, you know, that road in between is always paved with a whole lot of stuff we don't feel like doing, right? And sometimes that's the hardest thing, you know, like we were talking about vision. When you're moving towards manifesting a vision that, that the creator has implanted with you, into you, it's hard to imagine that there's going to be all these different things that are not fun, that are not cool. Peace James got a baki that we don't feel like doing, you know? And of course, when we get our own idea and we get our own vision, we just go right to the vision, you know, peace, Michelle. And that's sometimes a difficulty. That's a difficulty sometimes with us because, <laughs> um, and I'm just laughing because I'm thinking about all the students who have come to me and said, I'm, I'm here to be this and I'm here to be that. And then I'll say, okay, well, like they'll say, I'm here to be a healer and, and, and to, you know, to medicinally heal my people and things like that. And then I'll start asking questions like, well, have you taken any classes, you know, on, on healing or have you thought about going to school for medicine? No, that's not really my thing. You know, they don't want to do that, but they just want to jump to, to, to the vision. And I understand the idea of manifesting and just kind of thinking or believing it into being, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to discount that or anything like that, but there's a road. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, well, pretty much all the time that road is going to have things that we don't want to do and being able to move towards into the things that we we have to do is a mark and a sign of self-control right and you know one of the biggest things in that you know a lot of times we have to address some of the addictions that we have and those addictions a lot of times are based around our sense of self of self-worth our sense of self-love right because often we have this, um, it's like a, it's like a trickle down theory and it's a trickle down theory of, of love. And what that, what that theory says often to us is e even if we conceptualize that love for like a God, right. Or a creator, whatever, whatever you're working with. Right. Um, it becomes very transactional in the sense that, um, I have a God, I have a creator, I have a, you know, Peace India Hunt. I have all these, you know, whatever whatever you call it. But my love or the love that that creator has for me is based around what I do. So if I do things that please that creator, if I'm pleasing to that creator, then now I will receive that creator's love. And it's always good to understand that, you know, a people or a culture's mytholo mythology, excuse me, is based around their highest and lowest ideas. So their God you know, it's almost a question, what came first, man or God, you know? So for some, for some, they came before their God. They created a God in their image. And then for others, they recognize that they have been created in an image of a supreme being. Peace, Julio, right? So based upon that, that same trickle down theory of love now becomes the same way that they manifest and move through love in their own life. You see? So if I have to perform certain acts and be pleasing to a God for a God to love me, then the same would go for any relationship I have, whether it's a love relationship or anything. So if I please this other person, they should love me. So the things that I'm doing are not based out of, out of an, out of a love for them are not based out of a humble de desire to just do, you know, and to do love as love is a verb. But the things that I do are based out of a desire for this person to do back for me, to love me back, right? And like I said before, when your love is laced with agenda, people tend to run away from you.
And if you don't have a, a proper conception of what love is, then, you know, you'll say, you know, I, I love this person. I love this person with all my heart and they left me anyway. And, you know, if you're humble enough and you're open enough and sometimes broken enough, because sometimes that's what it takes for someone to really sit down and talk to you and you to really listen, you know, then you might discover that I really didn't love that person. I really, I really, it really was a tit for tat type of experience for me. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do that. Now, now what you got back for me, you know, sometimes you see that when you first meet a person, you know, um, you just see the amount of things they do for you, the amount of tension that they give you. Peace, Mama Marva. You know, sometimes if it's a woman, you know, she's dressing a certain way or she's um, sending a certain kind of certain kind of pictures, let's just say, um, um, or just, you know, just a certain affection and, and energy that she's showing from the very beginning with the assumption of that's what, what you what you want. So she's trying to please you. She's trying to please you because she would like love in return. And the same thing, you have guys who will show you a certain amount of attention. They're texting you all the time. They may send you certain kind of pictures or certain kind of videos. They're listening to everything you have to. Everything you have to say is, is interesting, all your boring stories and all that. Peace, Brother Vermont. And it's because they're, they're trying to please you to receive love, you see, because they, they have been held in bondage. They're in bondage by a trickle-down love theory. Now, that trickle-down love theory may come from their religion. It may have come from something that they've ideated inside of their own mind. Peace, Falasha. Peace, Falasha. First greetings. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, my, um, I, didn't, I didn't put my thing on mute. So, willfully, I won't get too many messages and stuff in between. So, I know it's loud if you're wearing headphones when those alerts go off. Sorry about that. I don't even want to try to touch it and turn it off because I'll probably end the live by mistake. Um, peace, Zanaba, free Om. You know, so like I was saying, so is this 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 trickle down effect? This is trickle down theory, and what begins to happen is not only is that how that person relates to to their God, but that's also how that person will relate to other people, and of course, that's how that person will relate to themselves. So now it becomes a thing where love is defined towards itself by by um, the frequency in which I can please myself. So if I please myself, I'm loving myself, right? And a lot of times that is the, um, that is that is the interest, entrance to your addictions, right? So food addictions, drug addictions, sex addictions, you know, information addictions, you know, there's, there's so many things that a person can be addicted to. It's not just drugs, it's not just sex, it's, gambling, social media, attention addiction, uh, like I spoke to you about before, thinking can be addictive, you know, thinking addictions, you know. Um, so now they, they begin to now start to delve and dive into all of these addictions because I want to please myself, right? So when I eat this chocolate cake, I'm pleasing myself. Oh, this is good. So I must, it feels so good. And I'm so pleased by this chocolate cake. I must love myself, you know, or, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to smoke this because when I smoke this, I relax and I feel better. So, so forth and so on. So I'm pleasing myself right now that money myself. Now we could just go through the list because I'm sure if we were in a, we were in a group right now, if we were in a physical group or even a zoom meeting or something. And I said, can everybody who's currently suffering from addiction, can you raise your hand? I'm sure that there would be a lot of hands that go up because a lot of us have different addictive behaviors. And sometimes we don't know how to break them because we don't know where they're sourced from. We don't know that those behaviors, even the ones that seem very noble, because like I've said so time, so many times, sometimes your consciousness can hide, you know, your ego. Your ego will find a way to sneak in there and sit in there. And, and whenever you address it, you try to address the ego, the consciousness will stand up, uh-uh. The reason I do this is because I'm saving my people. The reason I smoke this or the reason I take these pills or this and that, so that way I won't hurt somebody because, you know, I'm really stressed out. The reason I eat like this, because I work hard. I work real hard and, and you know, it's not wrong with me rewarding myself. You see, so there'll always be something in there where it's like, it's almost like it's its own, it's got its own guard. 
that it, it keeps people from getting close to it in that sense. You know, addictives can be very tricky in that sense. So, like I said, that trickle down love theorem, it goes from you to your creator, you to other people, and then you to, to yourself. So now that's now when we get caught up in even our titles and what we do in, in our stations in life, now we start to find our identity in that. That can become an addictive thing that we can't let go of. You know, like, um, you know, you think about, um, I've heard so many people in Western culture lead a conversation with their degree, you know, um, or if they, or if you say something and they disagree with you or you disagree with them, the first thing they tell you is how educated they are. You know, I'm very educated. I have a degree in this or I went to school for that. I went to that, 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 you know, I have my, my diploma. You know, whatever whatever it is that they that they deem as being something important. But no one ever says, like, you know, I clean buses. I know what I'm talking about. You know, um, I clean up poop at the zoo. I know what I'm talking about. I work in a candy factory. I wrap candy for a living. I know what I'm talking about. Or I, I, I know God loves me. I wrap candy. You know, I know God loves me. I work in a donut factory. I poke the holes in the donuts. I know God loves me. You see, nobody ever says anything like that, right? Because oftentimes our sense of love is wrapped it up into the identity that pleases us the most. And then sometimes there's a collect piece, Esme, piece so collected, by the way, <laughs> over there laughing. But sometimes that identity is a part of us pleasing ourselves, you see. So what happens with an addiction is this. Like I said, it nestles inside of so many things and then we become trapped within that we become trapped within those identities you know sometimes we might it could, like i said it could be the job you know i'm over here I, I work at a brokerage firm and you know i have a, a high position in inside of this firm and you know i'm miserable i hate what i'm doing i, I hate the high pressure environment i hate the stress I, I hate the fact that everybody peace quantum love i hate the fact that everybody i'm surrounded by are drug addicts and you know every day after work they're going to the bar and picking up prostitutes and all. you know i'm just speaking about like if it's a brokerage firm because you know I've, I've worked on wall street before i know i know what goes down um so let's just say i hate that environment you know and then someone might say well hey why don't you I don't know, like i said go to the zoo get a job at the zoo you know what i mean uh you love being out in nature why don't you be a park ranger you know yeah sure you're making two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year now but you could be a park ranger and What's the starting salary? $34,000 a year, but they give you a place to stay. So you don't really, you won't really need much. And then you start thinking, man, how, how, how's that going to look? It's the first thing that comes to mind. How's that going to look? I'm here, I'm, I'm doing this, and I, I have money to do anything I want to in the world. And now I'm going to go in the middle of the woods with a bunch of mosquitoes and wear a, a Girl Scout outfit or a Boy, Boy Scout outfit and be chasing people you know, teenagers down for drinking in the woods and smoking and stuff like that. That's not going to look right. Sorry about that for that alarm again, you know. Um, so that's a part of addictions. And that's a part of a trickle-down love theorem, you see. So what I have to do and what I have to appear to be has to not only be pleasing to me, but it has to be pleasing to you. You know, because what is my family going to say when I tell them, you know, I, I left this, this illustrious position or this lucrative position to go do this, right? And sometimes we have that conception, conception, especially as we come, we go deeper into our relationship with truth. You know, some of the questions that do come up is how is my family going to respond to this? I love my family. How are they going to respond to me now, no longer wanting to, to carry the, the family name? You know, how is it that, <laughs> how is it that, yeah, I hear you precious, mom. <laughs> How is it that they're going to feel that, you know, I no longer want my children to go to these type of events or I'm not going to go to this type of event or I'm not going to eat grandma's special bacon double. Um, oh, man, there was a there's, there's somebody I know used to make this bacon double burger lasagna. One piece, piece, Shakira. One day I'll get them to describe it to me. I forget it. I, it just my memory just triggered. But it was basically a bacon. It was like stacked, like four bacon hamburgers inside of like six or eight layers of lasagna. Just 
crazy, just madness, right? You know, it's like, I'm going to make that for you. You ain't going to make that for me. You ain't going to kill me up in this morning. You know, but uh, yeah, I am going to ask my man, because my man's sister used to make that. You know, bacon, d d something, peace, shadow book. Good dawning to you, sis. But used to make some kind of craziness. But anyway, my point is, you you know, with your relationship with truth, you might say, I don't eat like that anymore. <laughs> I For me, I can't eat that. Like, I would, I would probably die. Like right, right there on the spot. Like I die. My my system can't take all that. You know what I mean? The bacon alone. You know what I mean? But th then the the cheese and the pasta and the whatever. You know, hey, Miss B, greetings. You know. So again, a lot of times it's the reaction that we become, we become, you know, in bondage to, if you will. You know. And again, these are the these are the genesis, the genesis of a lot of the addictions that we suffer in life, because a lot of times what happens with our addictions, again, because they're nestled inside of our consciousness. And I, I'll give you an example. Have you ever gone to the store before? Let's say if you, you have certain things you don't want to you no longer want to eat anymore. Have you ever gone to the store before and came home and found certain things in your bag? And you can't remember when you picked it up. I'm sorry about it. You, nah, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to try to turn that off. But let me see. If I ain't alive, just know. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, you, won't hear, you know, I, I know that's that, that that's very jarring, those alarms, especially if you have your, your um, yeah, I know some of you like to wear gaming headsets and stuff like that. But, um. Like I was going to say, you know, peace, peace, Code 33. Greetings to you. Um, so what happens is a lot of times you might go to the store or something like that, and you come home and it's like, how did that, how did the, the bottle of wine or, you know, chocolate chip cake, cheesecake, whatever, whatever it is that, you know, you know, your, your poison is a loaf of bread, you know, or some rolls or something like that. Um, and and it's almost like you're almost kind of like an automaton. You see what I'm saying? Your, your addictions have just kind of become an automatic thing because this is what happens a lot of times. When we wake up in the dawning, we don't affirm what the creator has implanted in us once we became servants to the truth or we, or we, we decided that we wanted to be bonded to truth, right? So once you decide that you want to be bonded to truth, you got to realize that there's a seed of the creator or there's a genetic imprint of the creator that is now growing and expanding inside of you. And that genetic imprint is based around freedom and free movement and most importantly, will. The main thing that separates you from spirits, you from angels, you from, you know, demons, you know, you from all of these different archetypical kind of kind of kind of energies, even, you know, is the fact that you have will. So now that your will has been reestablished, your divine will, your 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 original will, you know, now that seed it needs what? Water. And what is water? It goes back to what I was talking about yesterday. It's that nurturing of the hearing from the creator or the or or the the, the words of the creator, right? That's what now starts to grow that thing so it, it gets bigger and it gets stronger. But what we tend to do, you know, especially if you a lot of times when you're a part of a an addiction group, what you what you affirm consistently is the lower parts of you. You know, every day you wake up, I'm I'm an addict. You know, I'm an addict. I'm going to be an addict for the rest of my life. And, you know, and then you work from that point forward, right? A lot of times you're, you're taught and you're trained to do that. Not, you know, well, I am created in the creator's image and I'm being made and fashioned in the creator's image because I have the same genetic structure of, my parents who are who are divine beings and they are the sovereigns of the universe so i'm going to wake up every day and say that to myself and that's constantly the the reality that and the focus that i'm going to choose to live in because you see a lot of times what we do when we have a certain addiction a lot of times what happens is that we don't speak about the addiction. This is how you end up getting stuff in your shopping bag and stuff like that without remembering how you, you don't remember buying it. 
you know, or you just conveniently when you went to the to the, the cash the cash the cashier and they were scanning it, somehow you just was looking away when that went across the scanner. Somehow you just decided to pick up the tabloid magazine on the side and and look at that and you know, sometimes it just conveniently happened and then they dropped it in the bag and I don't know how that got to it, you know. Um, and I'm not going to look at my receipt and I'm not even going to look at the, you know, the, the ticker adding up everything, you know, right? So a lot of times what happens is when we're immersed inside of that addiction, we only speak about the addiction while we're in the middle of the action of it, right? So we'll be sitting there stuffing our face with upside down pineapple cake or quadruple layered hamburger lasagna or bacon burger lasagna and then while we're eating it we'll be saying yeah i got a problem i got a food problem you see or you know while we're we, we got our mouth on that on that that glass pipe you know yeah i got a drug issue or while we're smoking yeah you know i smoke too much right and that's how we peace miss cindy jones private eye you know uh grandmother private eye at, at that so a lot of times what happens is that we're not really in tune when we're not engaged in that activity and we're not charging up that original framework inside of us. But while we're in the midst of our addictive behaviors, we're charging up the addiction even more as opposed to really speaking to it. So what if while you were smoking or popping a pill or eating something or edging out on, you know, uh, media, whatever form, you know, you may have an issue with or gambling, you were telling yourself, I hate this. I, I hate doing this. This is a, this is a disgusting, terrible habit. You notice how that, that barely comes out of your mouth. Now, maybe if you get around someone and this has happened to me, people who smoke, um, people, a lot of times have an impression of me that, you know, I don't really do much or I've never done much, which is great. I love that. You know what I mean? Because that just shows how far I've grown as a person, you know, but a lot of times people will get around me and they'll be smoking a cigarette or something else. They'll be like, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They'll start apologizing. Or maybe they're using profanity and they, they, they cut it down, you know, um, and I don't, I, yeah, I don't want to lie and say I don't use profanity. I do use profanity, but I don't I, typically when I'm by myself or when I'm just with my my inner family, you know. But outside of that, most people will never pretty hear me. You use me, hear, hear me use too much. You can tell I'm lying. See how the words all jumble. Most people tell me, uh, they they tell me they tell me hear me. You know I'm lying. <laughs> so yeah, you know sometimes sometimes I gotta let off. You know what I mean. <laughs> but um, so anyway. So what happens is this. So sometimes when you get around a higher energy or a more connected vibration, what begins to happen is that you start to feel convicted. So you might be smoking or using profanity or eating the wrong thing. I've had that happen. I'll come in and somebody's eating something crazy and they'll be like, don't say nothing. I don't know. I never talk about what people are eating. I think that's rude. You know, you eat whatever you feel like eating. Like, yes, my choices are my choices. Your choices are, are your choices. It's not like I'm a perfect physical specimen anyway. I, you know, I'm, I'm not in shape like that for me to be even talking crap. <laughs> you know, peace, E.I. injury. And even if I was and when I was, I still didn't talk about what people ate. You know, we're all on our own journey. And truthfully, what doesn't work for me may work for you and vice versa. You know, there's this, this, this no universal diet. I don't care who who your master teacher is. I don't care. And I'm not I'm not going to mention this. I don't want to make you feel like I'm disrespecting any of your dietary teachers, anything like that. But there's there's no peace, Olga. There's no there's no universal diet. You know, or we're supposed to all eat this. We, no, mm -mm. You, you, what the universal charges, you better know yourself. Know thyself. That's the universal diet. Know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Be in tune with your body. Be sensitive to your body. Now, of course, there's certain things. Yeah, battery acid is not typically good to, to take in, you know, or food that's full, full of parasites is not typically good 
to eat just because of the basic functionings and, and workings of the body. But, you know, um, sometimes certain things work well for fat works well for, for certain people. Some people don't do well with fatty foods. You know, um, grains work great for some people. Some people don't do well with grains. You know what I mean? Like it's so it's there's no there's no universality there. But the point I'm saying is that um, a lot of times within those addictions, we don't become the deity, right? If our deity and if our spiritual genetics are based based around will, and those spiritual genetics are based around freedom and free will and and, and sovereignty. And we have an addiction. And when we're in the midst of that addictive behavior, if we invoke that other part of us, peace, Ia Aldere, because essentially that free will DNA is going to look at the bondage like, what? You know, I had a friend back in the days, still friends today. Both of them are. There was another friend of ours. This, this is when I was, I was really heavy into 120. 120, like gods and earth or like some of you might call the five percenters right so at one point probably 80 percent of my friends were were five percenters you know and i remember there was another brother that we were cool with uh well he's not cool with. he was part of the brotherhood and he had a drinking issue so the brother i was with we were walking one day he was like yo i'm gonna beat the hell out of uh he said his government name. He was like, yo, I'm not even going to use his divine name anymore. And I was like, wow, what's up? What happened? He was like, yo, I was, I was, I was somewhere the other day and I saw him drinking. And I'm like, okay. And he was like, yo, we're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to be weak. You're supposed to be strong. He was like, yo, when I see him, I'm punch him in his face. And he was serious. This wasn't like proverbially, you know, he was like, no, I'm really, I'm, I'm going to fight him because and I know for some of you, this may, it may sound extreme, but I want you to understand, don't focus so much on the words or the action, but more so the concept. So the concept is when you're moving into a divine space, you're moving closer to love. When you're moving closer to your addictions, you're moving closer to hate because hate is a, is a disconnect with things, you know? So when you're unable to have self-control, you're actually disconnecting from the divinity that's inside of you. So when you're focused on your addictive behaviors, you're focused on your lower part or your satanic part. Now your satanic, satanic or your lower part is always going to be in fear of being removed, eradicated, or changed by your higher divine part. Your higher divine part, which is the light part of you, is going to be looking to always purify and, and cleanse out that 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 lower addictive or that lower controlled part. Because again, remember those addictive behaviors are based off of not having self-control. You see, like a lot of times I get people come to me for readings and stuff like that, or like they want rituals. Yo, chief, can you give me a money ritual? Yeah, I got a money ritual for you. It's called self-control. Stop spending money that you don't have. Simple, next. <laughs> you know, it, it, a lot of times you'd be surprised like how far some self-discipline to get you, you know, but but in lieu of self-discipline or in lieu of self-control, we want to start doing magic tricks, you see. And, and, and the thing to think about, which is so important, when you are addicted to anything, truthfully, you don't even, con you can't contact the, the creator with, the, with an addiction, you know, for instance, and a lot of lot of um, books, it talks about the power of forgiveness, right? And I'm saying like holy books. And, and some of them will even tell you, you cannot hear the voice of, of the divine as long as you have a grievance against your brother or you have a grievance against your sister. So if you do not have forgiveness in your heart, then I can't hear you, right? Well, that, that level of anger, that level of angst itself is an addiction because now you have something else controlling you other than your divine spirit. So, you know, and I understand that sometimes people do things that, you know, that, that pee us off, you know, they, they, it, that, that's, that's what life is. That's, you know, that happens. And sometimes we have to be honest about really making a list and saying, you know what, let me just be honest and make a list about not just one person, not just two people, but every person I don't, I, I'm, I'm holding 
memories of or sometimes I'm still having nightmares about and stuff and or having those explosive moments internally where I'm just going off it could be your mother it could be your father it could be your brother it could be your sister it could be your child you know sometimes children do things where we feel betrayed or you know or we feel let down or you know just disrespected and you know because of our role and our identity we don't really speak to it and sometimes you got to sit and you got to write that list and you know you don't have to go and pin it up on your refrigerator or anything i hate you 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 i hate that you know you don't have to do that but you you could just write a list and say these are all the people right now that are holding real estate in my heart and not in a good way and these are all the these are all the emotions that I have associated with these people that are creating blockages between myself and the divine. So these are emotional addictions. Every single situation here represents an emotional addiction that's going to play out in a, in a in a different kind of way. And I have to love myself enough to be willing to connect with my highest truth or my highest creator. You know, I really let me let me edit not my highest truth the highest truth right i want to be clear so you understand what i'm saying but i'm what i meant to say was like my my decision to connect with the highest truth so just say the highest truth edit out the mind right so if we're willing to do that in that sense if we're willing to make that connection and remove those obstacles and roadblocks you're going to find that your perception of your addictions is much different you're going to be like my man talking about my other man was like yo i can't stand him so you'll be able to look at the addiction like I can't stand that. I can't stand people who 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 lack self control. I can't stand that spirit of me that lacks self control. So while I'm sitting here smoking, I hate this. You know, you might be driving down driving down the highway smoking, and you're like, I hate this. This is disgusting. This is horrible. This is something that a weak person would do. You know, and if you're you're a man, that's a, that's a feminine. You know, and I, I, I know I'm talking to everybody, but I, I need to sidebar for a second. Um, men should never be controlled by anything other than their divine parents, divine parents. Right. So that's Mother Wisdom and that's Father Sky. That's far. That's that's that's, you know, that's Father and that's Mother Wisdom. That's it. You see. So even like when I see. MCs, I see rappers and they smoke and they drugged out. That's you're feminine. You know what I mean? You sitting there, and you got addictions. Like you can't tell me anything, and you got an you got an addiction. And I'm not looking down on people with addictions, but I'm saying you have brought yourself down, especially if you're supposed to be a man, because how can you control and regulate a family when before you before you start to regulate, you got to be regulated first. You know, I need to go have a family meeting. Let me go in the backyard and, and blow something back first. Boom. All right. All right. Cool. I'm good now. Or even sometimes you have situations with your woman. Here's another thing. You know, I don't deal with women who have addictions like that because you report to me first. You know, I've been in situations with women where we were generating revenue together. And before she came to report, hey, this is what, what we did today. Or this is what's going on today. The first thing she's doing is going over to the, the weed man or, or or I had a situation where it was even, you know, maybe a little stronger than that. But, you know, I got to go. I got to go serve that master first before we before we link up. You see what I'm saying? That can't work. <laughs> that, that's there's a disconnect there. Right. Your addictions have created a disconnect between us. You know, so. I say that to say that um, that's. The beginning of all of that, as I said in the very beginning, is based around on that, that trickle-down love that you have for yourself. If I please myself, I love myself. If I am pleasing, I will be loved back, whether that's my divinity or whether that's my, my husband, whether that's my wife, that's my boyfriend, that's my girlfriend, that's my children, whatever. Sometimes you find that in, in disconnected relationships when a child has been alienated from a parent and now the parent does everything they can to spoil that child to try to win that child's love over or even sometimes to try to get that child as an ally against another parent 
the sneakers you want. We'll go to the amusement park. We'll do this. So you want to, you want to eat this here. You can eat anything you want to, whatever it is, because if I can please you, you'll love me more. And then of course, that's, that's what I'm getting as opposed to addressing the fact of this. Once I came into that connection with truth, once I came in that connection with Yah, once I came into that connection with the divine, with the originator, with the creator, I had the basis for everything I needed at that point. You know, so getting quote unquote love or affection or trying to establish a, a feeling of infatuation coming from another human being, I really don't need at this point because I already got it. You see, um, <laughs> so there's a there's a sense there where if I'm still feeling like I need I need to be pleasing to everybody else and I need to please everybody else. That's because I haven't still established a relationship with that creator, with that source of love. If, if I have a, if I, if, if you sell water out of your store, but I have been given access to a water spring, a boundless water spring, I don't have to come into your, your store now tap dancing and, and buck dancing in order, in order to get your water. You know, I don't have to try to please you. You know, now I, I can speak to you truthfully as I really would like to speak to you because I have a connection here. Now, if I don't have that connection, if that hasn't been made access to me, so now, now I, I can become your servant. If I don't know how to pull thin money out of the air, like a leprechaun, <laughs> if, if I can't make thin money come out of the air, now that I'm going to be a servant to anyone else who I feel can trickle down love to me. It's like or trickle down money, excuse me. It's like trickle down love. If you trickle down money to me, then now I'll serve you because I haven't connected to, even though I may have said I did, I haven't connected to that, that connection where wealth comes from. You see? So that's where now, and that's all addiction. That's all addiction. Um, whether, like I said, you're eating your chocolate cake or, and everybody has a thing. So I'm using chocolate cake. I know a lot of people like chocolate cake, but we all have something, you know what I mean? Um, sometimes it's masturbation. You know, as soon as you get up, you want to please yourself, you know, and people say, that's good. You know, you should explore your body and you should know how your body works. And well, that ain't really how your body works. You're tricking yourself. Your body doesn't work by foolery and trickery. That's no, you're tricking yourself. You know, if you want to explore it and, you know, you get a mate and you say, hey, I'm going to lay down here and rub me all over, you know. Oh, this call from Nigeria. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. They call me. I know it's something. <sighs> anyway, I'll get, to, I'll get to that after the lot. <laughs> my assistant just called me and popped up on my screen. Um, so that's what I'm saying. You know, um, so as may say, I'm dealing with a diabetic dad that hides cookies under the mattress. Your dad is hiding cookies under the mattress because he doesn't feel loved. That's all. That's why he wants those sweets. And he's gonna sweet himself to death. That's 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 what happens next. But he'll go out with a smile. That's what people like to say. You know, I'm gonna I'm live the way I want to live. You know, yeah. So okay, I might die, but you know, I'm gonna die happy. I'm gonna die happy. I know that. You see, trying to please themselves because that's how he pictures he's loving himself. He doesn't picture that he's loving himself by getting to to the vision of what he's supposed to be and do. And, and having to do things along the way that he doesn't want to do. Like I said, from point A to point Z, there's a lot of stuff we don't want to do. It's a lot of stuff we don't want to do. But that's why, you know, like they say, um, keep your eyes on the prize, if you will. You know, and that's like a real thing. You have to keep your eyes focused on the, on the goal or the vision. And whatever you're going through along the way, you just... Yeah, I got to do some of this. I got to do some of that. This is unpleasant. That's unpleasant. But I got I got some unpleasant stuff I got to do today. Yesterday, I had to do some unpleasant stuff. And I was like, man, I don't feel like doing this. But I got to get to where I got to be. <laughs> you know, and part of where I have to be is, you know, um, is fulfilling the vision of being a proper chief and coordinator to my group of people. Now, one of the things that I have to model to them is discipline i get emails and messages all the time chief um 
this is happening or you know I haven't spoken to my mother in 10 years and she reached out to me she's going through some problems should I should I call her back every time I call her back there's always some drama or there's always this or last time you know she had a drug addiction she stole some things out of my house I don't feel like doing it you know now I can't really speak to that if I'm wrapped up in my own addictions and only doing what I feel like doing you see I can't I can't not only can I not model that but I can't speak to that with the proper energy authentic authenticity you see so that's something I may not want to do maybe there's somebody who did something to me that I don't want to talk to them anymore either but I may have to go through and do that in order to fulfill the other vision you know I got to see the relationship between them you see so that's what I wanted to share you know I'm, I'm not gonna uh, go too much longer than this but um we got to get free of bondage by allowing and I did a segment already on freedom I would advise you to go back and check that one out if you didn't and I really spoke about what freedom truly is you know allowing the the divine to operate through us is actually freedom but again um our addictions and our and our bondage is based on a desire to please ourselves and you know I did one on that too when I spoke about addictions and how we opiate ourselves in order to numb ourselves you know so um you know that numbing or that trying to um take away the pain of going from point a to z it doesn't really work you know that's like students who say you know i'm a, I'm a pop a pill before i work on the school paper you know or you know you're having marital problems at home um so I'm, I'm going to drink some. I know when I go home, my wife is going to be riffing. She's going to want to talk. I don't feel like talking. So I'm going to go to the bar first, get drunk. And then so that way, when I go home, I can sit and listen to what she's talking about. Does that ever really work? You know, just kind of sit back for a moment. Think, we're in history. Has that ever really truly worked? Opiating yourself or um, feeding into your addictions before you have to do something that you don't really want to do. In fact, you get more of an endorphin high. Peace, Marjavari. You get more of an endorphin high when you actually do what you don't want to do and you go through it and you push through it. And that sense of accomplishment that comes. But it requires that initial burn that some of us, so many of us don't want to go through. But you have to start having a hatred for that addiction and hatred for anything that controls you over what the divine control is supposed to be that you committed yourself to me. To, to be to, to that you committed yourself to be controlled by. So like for me, I said, I'm going to be controlled by truth. What's truth? When I discover truth, I'm going to make course corrections based on what I find to be true. Right. So once you can do that, then now anything else that tries to jump in. But hey, let me let me let me control you. Let me rule you. Let me you let, no. like you'll look at it almost with that same level of like incredulous, incredulous hostility. Like, no, uh -uh, I, I'm, I'm here. You know, it's almost like when you're out and you're in a relationship and someone's trying to trying to talk to you, you know, and you tell them no, and they're still pressing the issue after you told them you have someone, you, you're like, no, you're not going to mess up my situation over here. No, you know, it's that got to be that same kind of fidelity and that same type of loyalty to our truth to push beyond it. We'll dig into it a little bit more, you know, but I just wanted to leave you with that today. And of course, greet you, you know, try to give you some some nurturing before you uh, go and serve other people's goals. And, and like I said, before you start engaging in the addictive practices, you need to affirm what you are. I'm free. I have free will. I have the will and the mind of the creator already inside of me. That's what exists inside of me. That's what's moving inside of me. That's what's flowing inside of me. I am in bondage to no other person. I'm in bondage to no other entity. I'm in bondage to no institution. I'm in bondage to no government body. I am bonded and, and shackled to the truth. I am bonded and shackled to my purpose in life. My purpose has been given to me by the creator. Nothing else will ever rule over me. I am not an addict. I am not an addict. I am not an addict. I don't have a food addiction. I don't have a sex addiction. I don't have a gambling addiction. I don't have a social media addiction. I don't have a thinking addiction. I don't have an, an affection addiction. I, I don't, I'm not insecure. 
you know, I don't have low self-esteem. I do have a clear definition of what I am and who I am and, and where I'm going. I do have a clear vision in life. I am not goalless. I am not pointless. I am worth something. Even if if I'm a janitor or if, or if I'm if I'm hauling garbage, I am worth just as much as someone who's who's a doctor saving lives or pulling people out of burning buildings. I am worth something. I am valued because I have the genetics of the creator inside of me. So my position and my and my human identity or my earthly identity does not determine my wealth. You wake up every day, you say that to yourself. That didn't take that long, right? That didn't take that long. But think about the damage from your addictions, how long that, that lasts with you. You see? Try it out. All right. Now, I <laughs> have to go do some work that I don't feel like doing. <laughs> so I'm going to go continue on with, uh, with my tasks and with my work. And um, I will let you all do the same. You know, you're more than welcome, everyone. And, you know, continue to grow. And like I say, love people, inspire people, protect people. All right? You find some opportunities to do that today. Be well. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. You're welcome, everyone.